Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today I'd like to continue our discussion on numerical optimization algorithms. So if you remember in our previous video, we discussed the setup of how a numerical optimization algorithm might be set up and it was a very simple idea, right? It said that if you started at some location uh, within your decision vector space, all you're gonna do is you're gonna basically pick a direction and a step size and move in that direction by that step size in order to generate your next point in your numerical optimization algorithm. So in our previous video, the one that's playing over there, we talked about how to choose the direction and we said one choice for this was the very classical gradient descent method to choose this uh, direction DK. We didn't actually discuss how are you gonna choose the step size and that's the dis topic of uh, the discussion today. I wanna look at two very simple methods of how to choose this step size alpha K. So the two simple techniques that we're gonna look at are one is just using a constant step size and then two we're gonna look at a scheme called the diminishing step size and we're gonna see that these two are very simple and somewhat related, okay? So why don't we go ahead and start with the discussion of the constant step size. So that is actually really simple. The idea with a constant step size is, uh, as the name implies, all you are gonna do is you are gonna choose alpha k to be some constant number beta for all k, right? So in here, beta is some positive uh, constant. So that's, <laughs> As you can see, yields a constant step size if this dk is a unit vector. So we should probably put that in here. If you remember in our previous discussion, we, dis we talked about how usually you are gonna normalize your direction to be a unit vector. So for the remainder of this discussion, let's also make that same assumption. So we're gonna assume this is a unit vector. Right, Because if that is the case, and if you choose alpha, their step size to be this constant beta, basically the distance that you step every single time is going to be this beta number, right? So you are literally going to start at some location and just pick a direction and then walk in that direction by the amount beta. Then you're gonna pick a new direction, walk in that amount by beta, pick a new direction, walk, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's a really, really simple idea. So to hammer this, uh, this concept home, let's go ahead and examine that same example uh, quadratic cost function that we were looking at in the previous video, just to refresh your memory, this is what it was, right? It was, let's call it now FA, because I actually wanna look at two cost functions in this lecture today. So let's look at cost function FA, and then later we'll talk about cost function FB. So um, again, to refresh your memory, this is what it was, and I tried to, to sketch the contour lines of this cost function over there. Um, I'm not the best artist to tell you, well, let me flash up a screenshot showing uh, what it should look like, right? Um, and then uh, you can kind of see, uh, it's a reasonable rendition, but long story short, it's basically this sort of skewed quadratic bowl shaped cost function, right? Now, uh, in the example I'd like to consider, let's think about starting at some initial condition. In fact, let's look here, what did I pick? Um, let's use x zero of uh, the same thing we did last time, how about minus five and 12, right? So what we're saying is we're gonna start here at minus five, 12, I don't know, it's somewhere around here, right? Here is x zero, okay? And what we're gonna do is let's again use gradient descent like we talked about last uh, lecture to basically choose the direction dk, which is uh, in the opposite of the gradient. And now what we're gonna do is let's apply this constant step size with different values of beta and see what happens uh, and see how the algorithm performs by basically doing this, right? Because at this point we have everything we need, right? We know that at every step size or at every uh, iteration of the algorithm, the direction is gonna be chosen by the negative gradient. And then this constant step size is just gonna be whatever value beta we choose. So Tell you what, let's jump over to MATLAB and look at a couple of different scenarios of how this behaves uh, using different values of beta. All right, so here we are in MATLAB, and I've basically coded up our numerical optimization algorithm using the gradient descent. And for this first scenario here, we are going to be using the cost function FA that we talked about on the board, and we're going to be using a constant step size. And let's use a beta of a half. 
um, 0 0.5. And let's just take 55 steps and see what happens. So again, this code isn't too interesting other than it allows us to pick these different constants. So let's go ahead and run this. And in fact, I'm going to put in a little breakpoint here so we can examine what the situation looks like. And here we are. So here is our initial condition at minus 512. I also probably should mention that for this cost function FA, we can analytically calculate the uh, location of the, the global minima, which is actually at zero negative one. So I've drawn that here with a uh, green X. So hopefully what we should see is as we start progressing through this algorithm, we are gonna be descending down the gradient with constant step sizes, and hopefully we eventually make it to this green uh, X. So tell you what, let me take off this breakpoint and let's just let this thing run and we will see what happens. Let me see if I can put these things off on one side of each other so we can see the progress. So continue. There we go, down the gradient, and aha, uh -huh, look, it's going, and it, oh, that's kind of interesting. It looks like it gets down there and it starts bouncing around. Um, I'm also going to plot the cost function value versus the iteration number, and again, we can go ahead and analytically calculate what is the global minima cost function value, and it turns out it's actually one. So the minimum cost function value you can achieve for this particular cost function is one, and I've drawn that with this green dashed line. So as we can see, um, yeah, it does look like we are converging down toward the minima, and just looking at the picture, we can see that it marches down the gradient with constant step sizes and we eventually get yeah pretty darn close to the bottom so this looks pretty reasonable um it does bring up some interesting phenomena though you can see that as we take this constant step size of alpha of uh sorry of beta of 0 0.5 right so the step size alpha k is just a half at every single iteration um, you see that it goes and it's a little bit slow to converge you can see down here this is it's taking the same step sizes all over. So, I mean, we get there, but it's kind of it takes a little while. And furthermore, look, we get this interesting behavior uh, near the, uh, the optima is it's having a hard time actually landing exactly on that stationary point, right? And in fact, we can actually see that problem get exacerbated if we just change the situation a little bit. So let's, instead of looking at scenario one, let's look at scenario two, which is the exact same situation except I've increased the step size. So instead of having a step size of just 0 0.5, let's look at a step size of uh, 2.5, so a five time larger step size. And uh, let's go ahead and run this again and we can get a gander at what's happening. And look at that. That's actually really interesting, right? Well, you can see here that we start going down, down, down the gradient, but now because the step size has to be two and a half units every single time, we actually get this interesting phenomenon where we start bouncing back and forth between the two sides of the valley and we constantly overshoot the, uh, the minima. So if you look at this, and in fact, if we zoom in um, a skosh onto some of these lower or uh, higher iteration numbers, you see that we never ever get down to one, right? Because you're always, the algorithm is bouncing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? Um, so there's some interesting phenomena here with this constant step size scheme. And in fact, you know what we can do is uh, let's look at even more interesting behavior of what might happen if you have um, just a simple idea of a constant step size. So let's go here to scenario number three. Now, scenario number three is the exact, um, well, uh, no, I should be very careful. It's not the, it's a different cost function. It's cost function FB. Now, instead of jumping up over to the board, um, let me just show you it. Actually, I have it in Mathematica. Maybe that's the easiest way to look at it so we don't have to stare at how these, uh, <laughs> of, of my horrible drawings on the board. So again, this was the cost function FA, right? And we just saw that over, excuse me, over here, right? So here are the ISO cost lines for cost function FA, and here they are in Mathematica. And you can see this thing looks totally reasonable, right? Now, let's look at a different cost function, FB. This cost function is actually almost identical. Let me zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. It's the exact same thing. The only difference is I've changed the uh, matrix HB. So this entry here used to be a two. I'm going to make it a 200. Okay. 
And then finally, the only other minor change is the constant offset of RB. It used to be, I think, a constant offset of 2. Now I'm going to make this a constant offset of 101. And again, the only reason, as, as you can probably see very easily from this, this constant offset is not going to change the location of the stationary point. It's just going to change the cost function value at that stationary point. In fact, this cost function has the exact same stationary point as the previous one. Um, and by by moving it up or down using this offset, I can actually make it so it has the exact same cost function value at the stationary point. So again, um, in, in words, the stationary point for cost function FB is still at 0, negative 1, and the minimum value of the cost function is still positive 1, okay? Now, the difference in this situation is, look at the ISO cost lines for FB. So this problem is, is sometimes referred to as poorly scaled, because as you can see, it's, it behaves very differently in the x1 direction as it does in the x2 direction. So now, if we throw the, our, our numerical optimization algorithm using gradient descent as the direction and using a constant step size as the uh, step size choice, let's see what ha happens here. So that is scenario number three. So three is, again, like we said, it's cost function FB, and we're going to use the same step size we did just now of 2.5. Okay. So now, if I run this and we look at the algorithm, look at what's going on here you can see it's making very, very slow progress towards the stationary point because of the poor scaling of this function, right? There is a very, there's very little gradient in the x1 direction as compared to the x2 direction. So therefore, by following that negative gradient, we make slow progress in the x1 direction, right? So again, let me maybe just run this movie one more time so everyone can see what's going on. So, yep, look at that. It's making slow, slow progress. And in fact, I think if we let this thing run longer, we would still have that problem where we're sort of bouncing over and uh, past the stationary point. In fact, you know, for giggles, let's let's do that. Let me let me crank this up to maybe 65 iterations instead of 35 iterations. And we can see it. Yeah, it's it's getting there. It's getting there. But boy, this is taking forever. And yeah, I, I'm pretty positive we are going to have this oscillating phenomena even as we get to the state get close to the stationary point so we're not going to really be able to get to the stationary point um it's just going to be jumping back and forth back and forth uh around them right so um that is a good look at the constant step size let's hop back to the board and summarize all right so you know we could probably make a small table of uh pros and cons uh in different situations using our uh, constant step size algorithm, right? So we saw that really with the constant step size algorithm, the only thing you are able to really change and tune is the size of the step, right? So we saw that if you have a small step size, some of the pros of this is uh, we're actually able to find the stationary point. I'll maybe just abbreviate SP, right? We saw that we was able to get there. It didn't have a lot of these, uh, it didn't have the, the jumping over the stationary point problem. The obvious con of this is you make slow progress, right? Regardless of the scaling of the problem. Even if the problem is nicely scaled, it might take you a long time to get to that stationary point because you're taking these slow, cautious steps toward it, right? Now, if you have a large step size, right? Obviously some of the pros of this is if your problem is nicely well scaled, you can make fast progress, right? You can get there faster because you're being less conservative and you're jumping toward the stationary point quicker, right? The obvious con with a large step size is you might miss it completely, right? You may miss the stationary point, right? And even if you have um, a large step size, if your problem is poorly scaled, you still might have slow progress. Right. So overall, while the constant step size scheme is is very simple and easy to implement, it's it's probably got more issues than we than we would like. Right. And most of this stems from the fact that this this algorithm is is not very intelligent. Right. It doesn't adapt to the situation. It just blindly takes the exact same step every single time of your of your every iteration of the algorithm. Right. So in that case, since this is maybe not so 
super duper hot. Let's look at now uh, mo potentially modifying the step size at every iteration via the diminishing step size routine. So give me a second to erase some of this and uh, we'll talk about that. All right, so the diminishing step size is uh, actually pretty interesting and intuitive. So it says the way you are going to choose your step size is actually let's make it somehow related to the size of the gradient of the cost function at its location. So in other words, let's take a look at the gradient of the cost function at the point xk, right? Now, we saw that uh, basically if the gradient is large, that probably implies you're far away from the stationary point. So you want to take a larger step there, right? And as the gradient starts getting smaller and smaller, that usually implies you're getting closer and closer to the stationary point. So you may want to slow down and, and make your step sizes smaller and more cautious, right? So we can quantify that by basically just looking at the two norm of this gradient, right? So in this case, yeah, if you have a larger, more aggressive gradient, you have a larger, more aggressive step size and vice versa. Now, the only other thing you may want to do here is let's introduce a little bit of a scaling factor here. Let's maybe put a gamma in front of this, right? So in here, the gamma is basically a scaling factor or it's another one of these tuning sizes. So it allows you to basically, again, uh, uh, tune the aggressiveness or how quickly you want to try to converge um, using this scheme, okay? So again, uh, this, is, this is actually, again, really, really simple to implement, right? All you need to do is at every location, you see where you are, you see where the gradient is pointing, and then you also see how steep is that gradient, right? And then just, Basically compute its two norm, multiply by this, this scaling factor, and off to the races you go. So let's do that. Why don't we go ahead and again, look at these two cost functions, FA and FB. Whoops, sorry, I erased part of FB, but I think you all saw it. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> um, uh, using this scheme, this diminishing step size, and uh, examine a couple of these different scenarios by messing around with um, gamma here uh, to see what we end up with. All right, so let's go ahead and look at scenario four. So scenario four is using our nicely scaled cost function uh, with the diminishing step size and a gamma of uh, 0.5. So again, let's just let this rip and see what it looks like. Ah, that's really interesting. So look at that. If you take a look at this, you see the first iteration, it went from here all the way over to here. So as you can see, what ended up happening was we took a huge step initially, right? So that's because the gradient is much larger here than it is later on, right? So this is perfect. This is exactly what we want to have happen as we get closer to the stationary point, right? We see that the gradient starts diminishing and getting smaller. Therefore, our step size diminishes uh, appropriately as well. And look at this. We seem to get nice convergence toward the stationary point and we start approaching the uh, actual minimum cost function value, right? So in fact, I think if we let this run a little bit longer, um, so instead of 15 steps, let's take, uh, let's take maybe 25 five steps, run this thing again, and hopefully we get a little bit closer. And look at that, it pretty much nails it, right? So in this case, this seemed to work out quite well. Now, it's not all rainbows and butterflies uh, with diminishing step size. So for example, let's look at the next scenario, scenario five, which is the same thing that we just looked at, except I'm gonna increase gamma from instead of a half, increase it to 0.75. So just make it a little bit bigger and let's see what happens. So I'll run this again. That is interesting, right? Did you see how it started converging? We still got, it's still going towards the stationary point, but actually, look at this. What's ending up happening is we are getting a little bit of that zigzag jumping across the valley, overshooting the stationary point um, behavior. Uh, 
Over here, the stationary, the, the gradient was so large that we took such a big step, we actually went clear across to the other side of the valley. And then we went back and back and back and back, et cetera, et cetera. And again, you see, we're gonna eventually get there. So if we, if we crank this up instead of 25, let's make it, I don't know, 45 iterations, run this again. And it's getting, as you can see, it's, yeah, it's getting there. So this is, this is kind of working, right? Um, the cost function value is still going down. Now, let's crank that up even further. So for example, let's go to scenario six. Scenario six, instead of a gamma of 0.75, make it gamma 0.8. So it's just a tiny bit larger. And look at what happens here. Uh-oh, that's bad. Look at this, it's actually diverging. So it's not converging. So we are actually overshooting by so much that we actually get to an area where the gradient is larger than where we started with. And therefore, uh, we jump even farther across the next time and even farther and even farther and even farther and even farther. And does everyone see what's going on? Basically, the system is diverging in this case. So still, even with this sort of quote unquote adaptive uh, step size algorithm, if you don't choose the parameters appropriately for this problem, uh, you could run into these situations where your algorithm is not gonna converge on the stationary point, right? Um, and again, uh, this is the nicely scaled cost function. Why don't we look at the last scenario, scenario seven, which is um, basically diminishing step size on the poorly scaled cost function FB, right? And I'm going to have to choose this gamma. We saw that in this last case, you got to be careful how you choose this gamma parameter, right? If it's too big, you get divergence. If it's too slow, it's going to go, it's going to take forever. So it's a little bit like Goldilocks. You got to kind of find the, the right value. So in this case, I've got gamma of 0.009. I'm going to run this and yeah, it, it looks like it's gonna get there eventually, right? But again, we still have that same problem of because the problem is poorly scaled and there's not much of a gradient in the X1 direction, it's gonna take it a long time to get there. In fact, this might even be a, such a bad situation that because the gradient is getting to be so small down here, we're gonna start taking really, really small steps and, and it might take us forever to get the station to the stationary point, right? And like we said, if you just increase this a little bit, like let's add on a 001, just add on, you know, 10% of the, of the value to this. And then look at this. Now we get no convergence, right? It looks like it's just being uh, bouncing across the two sides of the valley. I bet, I bet if we push this a little bit further, we're going to have diver. Yep. Look at that. Now we got divergence. Now it's all, oopsie. Yep. And look at that. Uh, whoops, I got a graphics error, actually. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Let me run this again, see if I, if, if it's gonna, nope, my MATLAB may have just crashed on me. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I think you get the picture, right? That again, you gotta be careful with this step size. Too big um, uh, or, or too aggressive a gamma can lead to divergence, even with this adaptive diminishing step size scheme. All right, and before we leave this, let me show you one other scenario where this constant or diminishing step size um, selection and strategy might have issues. So I'm looking at a third cost function. Let's call this FC. Um, it's not too important what this function is or how it's defined, but what is important about this is sort of its, uh, its general structure. So if I rotate this and just look at it as a surface, it's um, it, it appears to be sort of quadratic, but it actually has multiple minima. So as you can see down here, there's sort of these four minima in the bowl, right? So this thing has, yeah, like we said, one, two, three, four. And the minima that we're searching for is this one down here at the bottom. Okay. So let me take a look at a contour plot that might be a little bit easier to see what's going on. And again, as you can see, we're trying to look for this minima down here um, at the location of x1 of 0 and y of minus 2.6-ish or something like that. Now, the only problem is, let's pretend what happens if you start with an initial condition up here. As you can probably imagine, the way this is currently structured, our step size, it's just going to start walking down and it might get stuck in this sort of local minima instead of finding the global minima. And in fact, that's exactly what happened. So let's run this with a diminishing step size with again with a gamma of 0 0.1 and uh, we'll take a look at what 
happens. So if I go ahead and take this breakpoint off again, let me see if I can scoot that off to one side and scoot this to one side so we can watch the algorithm progress as I move through this. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. Yeah, look at that. It went down here and it actually got stuck in this local minima. And actually, if we watch this long enough, we see that actually, look at this, the convergence starts getting uh, pretty poor and we actually run into a situation where we are now, again, bouncing back and forth. We can't even find this, this local minima with this gamma value. And again, if we try to get more aggressive with this gamma value, um, we get divergence. We can try to maybe tone it back a little bit to see if we can get, get a little bit smaller step size down here in the valley. But again, I think we see that the, the constant or diminishing step size, this is another situation where you could run into problems where there are multiple minima and you're most likely going to fall into the minima which is closest to where you started with your initial guess. So again, this sets the stage for some future um, algorithms and future strategies that will hopefully uh, overcome this weakness. All right, so we saw the diminishing step size is uh, is a little bit better. It's a little bit more sophisticated, but still there's, it's, it's not a silver bullet, right? Um, I think this is going to be the theme we're going to see with a lot of these numerical optimization algorithms is uh, they take a, some, some amount of fine tuning and tweaking and uh, there's no one size fits all. You may have to tune parameters of your numerical optimization algorithm to be specific to your particular problem. Um, so again, these were two fairly simple ideas of how to choose step size. Um, in our future video, we're actually going to look at uh, another technique known as line minimization to, to choose your step size. And we're going to see that it's a bit more sophisticated and yields a little bit better results. So um, with that being said, I think this is probably a good spot to leave it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if so, I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Surprisingly, if you just scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button. It really does help me continue making these videos. Um, the other way that you can support the channel is also via Patreon. And the nice thing about that is 100% of the proceeds that the channel receives via Patreon are going to be directed towards K through 12 uh, science, engineering, and adventures for kids and young adults. So um, while we're speaking about actually new videos, also remember they come out every single Monday. So I hope we'll uh, be able to catch you at one of these future discussions and we can all learn something new together. So until then, I think I'm going to sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.